How's it going guys? Past level question for pediatrics 2CK. If you're studying for step one, you should know this. Okay, so stop your whining, stop your complaining. Uh, I know some of you don't want the 2CK material. Relax, okay? You're gonna you're gonna learn this question, you're gonna handle it. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, and me HL man underscore medical links down below for me. Telegram links to the Telegram group channel down below and start the clip. Three year old boy, he's got a five minute episode, loss of consciousness, journalized body twitching. For the past two days, he has had a fever. No past medical history, immunizations up to date, he's alert and oriented. Otoscopic examination is normal. Neurologic physical exams are normal. Temperature 103.5 Fahrenheit. Question wants to know the next best step management. Okay, let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, audiometry, wrong fucking answer. Audiometry will be correct on pediatrics for 2CK if you have a kid who is not paying attention in class who has history of meningitis, okay? So you need to know meningitis history can lead to neurosensory hearing loss, and you're going to do air conduction audiometry for that, okay? Don't confuse that with tympanometry, holy shit. Tympanometry is a pressure study for the mobility of the tympanic membrane. All you need to know for that is an immobile, IMM, an immobile tympanic membrane is highly sensitive for otitis media, meaning if they tell you the tympanic membrane is mobile, that can help rule out otitis media. So you get a big fucking paragraph, no idea what's going on, they say somewhere in there, mobility of the tympanic membrane is normal. You're like, cool, not otitis media. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, ibuprofen, correct answer. Diagnosis here is febrile seizure. Okay, so it's passable for peds. You're saying for step one, you're like, what the hell? Okay, well, there's something called febrile seizure, which is a very small percentage of kids can get an isolated one-off idiopathic seizure in the setting of typically just a viral infection where, holy shit, the kid has a fever. Okay, now, if you're forced to... At, if you're forced to answer this question based on like a, a biopsychosocial uh, type uh, question, and they say, is there increased risk of epilepsy? Is there not increased risk of epilepsy? The answer is there's a small increased risk of epilepsy. Okay. It's not uh, normal uh, in relation to the general population. There is a s slight increased risk. For pediatrics, for 2CK, the risk is even higher. If there are focal neurologic signs, if the seizure lasts longer than 10 minutes, and if there's a recurrence of the seizure within 24 hours. So ibuprofen, some students say, but wait, I thought you're not allowed to give NSAIDs to kids. You're not allowed to give aspirin to kids, okay? That can cause Ray syndrome, of course, but ibuprofen you can give to kids. You can give acetaminophen to kids as well. So ibuprofen will be an answer on USMLE for febrile seizure. Uh, ibuprofen will also be an answer for transient synovitis, aka toxic synovitis. If you're saying for step one, you have no idea what that is. For 2CK, you need to know that's going to be viral infection followed by hip pain. Holy shit. Okay, it's not septic arthritis. It's just, for whatever reason, uh, viral infection can precipitate uh, transient inflammation of the hip. Okay, it's called toxic or transient synovitis. You can also give ibuprofen for that. So real quick, hopping through the other choices. Uh, try to see metaido benzyl guanidine scan wrong fucking answer some obscure scan never seen as correct it's uh, technically a way to diagnose neuroblastoma and in pediatrics as well as pheochromocytoma in adults nonsense answer choice wrong fucking answer choice d urinary hva and vma wrong fucking answer okay this is the next best step in management for neuroblastoma so neuroblastoma it's n mic gene it's going to be an abdominal, usually, uh, tumor in pediatrics where it will fall in the median, the midline, the median sympathetic chain. It's essentially the pediatric version of pheochromocytoma. That makes it really easy for you watching this clip, okay? So pheochromocytoma is adults, but in kids, there's something similar called a neuroblastoma. So you just say, okay, neuroblastoma, that's like the pediatric version, the kid's version of a pheochromocytoma, and it can secrete catecholamines as well, where we can pick up the metabolites in the urine called homovanillic acid, vanillyl medallic acid, urinary HBA and VMA. Okay. That's for neuroblastoma. I said it's usually intra-abdominal. It can occur in the posterior mediastinum. I know that sounds really weird, but it's asked on one of the pediatrics forms. And it can also cause dancing eyes 
Okay, so opsoclonus myoclonus syndrome, they can tell you there's weird eye movements. And they can also tell you violaceous eyelids, which sounds very fucking weird. I agree with you on that one. It almost sounds like the heliotrope rash in dermatomyositis, but you can get violaceous eyelids and you can get opsoclonus myoclonus dancing eyes uh, with neuroblastoma. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, urinary metanephrine's wrong fucking answer. It refers to pheochromocytoma investigation. So I just harped on pediatrics, neuroblastoma, adults, pheochromocytoma. So they'll give you easy uh, vignette of paroxysmal headache palpitations. Okay, you need to know in pheochromocytoma, it's paroxysmal, it comes and goes the high blood pressure. So they can tell you that blood pressure is 120 over 80. Students like, well, it can't be pheo. Of course it can be pheo. Okay, so it's not going to be all the time. Patient has a stressor, goes home. Blood pressure shoots up to 20 over 120, okay? So they want you to know that it's adrenal medullary, okay? So as I started saying, they'll give you an easy vignette of pheo. You're like, okay, pheo, no problem. And then they'll have answers like adrenal cortical, adrenal medullary. You need to know it's adrenal medullary, okay? That's the layer of the adrenal gland, the, the deep layer where the catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine are secreted. So pheochromocytoma. You're going to give an alpha-1 blocker irreversible as the next best step of management. Phenoxybenzamine is what they want. It's a long discussion. Uh, if you give a beta blocker first, you're going to kill the patient uh, because of what's called unopposed alpha. Long discussion, as I said, I don't need to make this a 19-minute YouTube clip. But the point is urinary metanephrines are uh, what we check for in the urine for pheochromocytoma. In this case, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.